We will conclude our discussion of uh, bleeding disorders with a discussion of platelet function abnormalities as well as some, some thrombotic disorders. Platelet function abnormalities all cause an increased risk of bleeding if the platelets are uh, slippery and don't adhere or don't properly activate, uh, they can't form a platelet plug, um, which generates the primary hemostatically uh, uh, stable clot. In bernard soulier syndrome, it is a hereditary deficiency of glycoprotein 1b, which causes a defect in platelet adhesion. The platelets can't bind von Willebrand factor and just slide by uh, when there's exposed collagen. Also, Glanzmann's thrombasthenia can cause a hereditary deficiency of the glycoprotein 2B3A complex, which causes a defect in the platelet aggregation. The platelets can't bind fibrin and therefore can't aggregate. There's also storage pool diseases, a hereditary defect in the ability of platelets to secrete their uh, activating and aggravation stimuli, such as thromboxine A2, as well as ADP. This causes a defect in platelet activation and an uh, increased risk of bleeding. Remember that aspirin pr blocks production of thromboxane A2, decreasing platelet activation and vasoconstriction, and this effect is irreversible and takes about a week for uh, the platelets to repopulate enough to have appropriate thromboxane A2 to cause appropriate uh, uh, hemostasis. Renal failure also interferes with the production and function of von Willebrand factor, causing defects in platelet adhesion. In clotting factor deficiencies, uh, we need to discuss, again, decreased production or uh, inhibition or increased consumption, as is in DIC, which we discussed earlier. Decreased production we can see in hereditary conditions such as hemophilia and von Willebrand's disease, and acquired decreases in production happen when the liver uh, fails to the point of an inability to synthesize adequate proteins. There can be acquired autoantibodies against the clotting factors or inhibitors, which we can also discuss. Clotting factor deficiencies uh, or disorders in secondary hemostasis manifest not as the gingival bleeding or epistaxis that we saw with uh, platelet lesions, but rather delayed bleeding after trauma. The platelet plug is formed, but it's not stabilized by fibrin and quickly dissolves. These can be manifest by menorrhagia in women, bleeding of the GI or GU tract, or particularly in hemophiliacs, um, crippling and uh, debilitating hemarthroses, which is blood in the joint space. Discussion of hemophilia. Hemophilia is an X-linked deficiency of either factor 8 or factor 9. Factor 8 is also called hemophilia A, or deficiencies of factor 9 are called hemophilia B, or Christmas disease. The severity of the disease is associated with how severe the deficiency is. If there is no activity of factor 8 or 9, it is considered severe. If moderate, uh, there is a 1 to 5 percent activity. And mild hemophilia, it only takes between 6 and 50 percent of activities of the uh, normal clotting factors to make only mild disease. Hemophiliacs are prone to massive bleeding with trauma or surgery, uh, or are susceptible to spontaneous hemarthroses. The laboratory findings in hemophilia are a markedly elevated PTT with a normal PT. The factor level and activity of factor 8 and factor 9 are markedly reduced. The treatment for hemophilia is with recombinant factor 8 or factor 9. Von Willebrand's disease is the most common inherited clotting factor deficiency. So von Willebrand factor can be uh, quantitatively absent or uh, just present in uh, lower levels or can be uh, malfunctioning. Von Willebrand's disease is a combination of platelet function abnormality and an inability to form a primary clot with platelet adhesion abnormalities as well as a clotting factor deficiency because von Willebrand uh, factor stabilizes factor 8 in the circulation. Type 1 causes a mildly decreased uh, von Willebrand factor as well as a uh, factor 8, and the bleeding is typically mild. Type 2 is a defect in the function of von Willebrand factor, and type 3, the most severe, is a complete absence of circulating von Willebrand factor, and therefore deficiencies in factor 8 as well. Signs and symptoms of von Willebrand's disease, easy bruising and bleeding are common, especially from mucous membranes or uh, 
menorrhagia in women. Laboratory findings are a prolonged PTT as well as a prolonged bleeding time because the platelet function is also affected. There is an abnormal ristocetin cofactor assay, which is an uh, assay of von Willebrand factor function. And there are also decreased levels of von Willebrand factor and uh, circulating factor 8 in types 1 and type 3, which you can remember are the quantitative defects in von Willebrand's disease. So a question to go over for these specific disorders. An 11-year-old male has markedly decreased activity of factor 8. If he does not receive factor 8 transfusions, what's the most likely sequelae? So this unfortunate 11-year-old boy has uh, hemophilia A, and we talked about the uh, various sequelae of the hemophilia, which are uh, hemarthroses, spontaneous hemarthroses, or massive bleeding after trauma or surgery. So looking through these uh, choices, you can see that section selection E, hemarthroses, is going to be the right answer. Menorrhagia could be the case uh, in the setting of an 11-year-old female, but odds are, again, if they haven't uh, undergone uh, their uh, initiation of menses, that's not going to be the answer, and certainly in an 11-year-old male is certainly not going to be the answer. We will conclude our discussion of bleeding disorders with a, a discussion of thrombotic disorders. The risk factors for thrombosis are remembered as Virchow's triad, which uh, comprises vessel injury, blood stasis, and a hypercoagulable state. Any combination of these three can put you at increased risk for bleeding. Vessel injury is increased with trauma, surgery, or inflammation. And blood stasis is uh, at increased risk for immobilization or hospitalization, varicose veins, or congestive heart failure with an inadequate venous return. Hyperviscosity syndrome such as polycythemia vera or Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia can also cause blood stasis. Hypercoagulable states can either be hereditary with a deficiency of the anticoagulants antithrombin 3 or protein C and S, or you can have a hypercoagulable state that is acquired with malignancy, oral contraceptives, or smoking. Different types of thrombosis you'll need to be concerned about for your exam as well as for clinical practice include deep venous thrombosis of the lower extremity veins, including the popliteal, femoral, and iliac veins. They are the most common. These deep venous thromboses uh, become problematic when they travel and get lodged in the pulmonary vascular tree, which can cause a pulmonary embolism. In the setting of a, a right-to-left shunt or some sort of... Uh, crossing of uh, the right to left, or venous to arterial vasculature, uh, specifically an atrial septal or ventricular septal defect, you can have uh, cerebrovascular accidents when these clots migrate into the arterial tree. Thromboses at unusual sites, specifically in the hepatic vein or in the mesenteric veins, can occur in hereditary diseases. Or recurrent spontaneous abortion can also indicate uh, disordered arterial clotting disorders, which can cause inadequate placental vasculature. Hereditary disorders to consider are antithrombin deficiency, and as we discussed, antithrombin acts as a negative regulator of the clotting cascade, as do protein C and S, and when they are deficient, they too can cause uh, uh, disordered clotting. Factor V Leiden mutation blocks cleavage uh, by activated protein C and S, and factor V Leiden is also known as activated protein C resistance. So uh, by blockage of the activation of protein C and protein S, again the clotting cascade can proceed unchecked. There is also the prothrombin mutation. The pathogenesis of the prothrombin mutation is unclear, but circulating levels of thrombin are increased. A question to go over in the uh, discussion of thrombotic disorders. A 70-year-old gentleman with metastatic lung cancer developed scattered ecchymoses over his skin. Prothrombin time is 30 seconds, PTT is 55 seconds, the platelet count is markedly decreased at 20,000. Fibrinogen is 75 milligrams per deciliter, and fibrin split products are remarkably elevated. What would you most likely see on a peripheral blood smear? We remember from our discussion of disseminated intravascular coagulation that, uh, uh, Certain types of cancers can cause DIC. 
So we look for what we would see in the setting of DIC, and the correct answer here is going to be schistocytes, selection C on the question. That concludes our discussion of bleeding disorders. Thank you for your time.